Welcome back for the second to last time for the coverage of Vices Liverpool 2016. We're now about to start the finals. Oh yeah. Yes, it's all <laughs> going to come down to this one match. Yeah. Um, it's been absolutely crazy what happened in the semi-finals. We've just had one of the weirdest matches where one player yeah. has an, an impossible way to victory, realizes how to how to get there basically and, and then he then makes a crucial mistake yeah, and didn't do it and rage quits actually yeah. actually which is why it was so confusing to us why why is he standing up why is he going away ah he just realized he made a mistake yeah all right that was um the opponent of thomas rose uh, nicolo mazzolini from italy yeah and with his very own version of the abc deck um speaking of italians let's have a quick look at the country breakdown this is what it looked like at the start of the tournament. 489 players. I think they're growing in numbers. <laughs> at some point it was like 480. Uh, from the United Kingdom showed up yesterday, bright and early. And then we had some travelers from Germany, Italy, France, Netherlands, Ireland, and so on. Quite a few nations in this tournament. After seven rounds of Swiss, this is what we played yesterday. We started today's event with 119 players from United Kingdom. 56 from Germany, so out of those roughly 100 players, 56 survived the cut. Um, 50, um, from the 50 from Italy, 26 survived the cut. So in both of these cases, roughly 50% made it to the second day. Very good conversion rate. Well done, Germany and Italy. And then after three more rounds, we performed yet another cut. And this is what our top 32 looked like. Yep. Plenty of UK players still. Yep. Um, looks pretty good. Pretty much the same um, distribution of countries as we had before. Yeah. And if we then quickly jump to the top eight, it's uh, Germany and Italy in front of the UK. So the veterans that tr made the travel ended up um, taking out the, the locals, so to speak. In yep. the final, it's Germany versus the UK. Now, in terms of decks, ABC was the big story going into the weekend. Almost 30% yeah. of the field were running with this new and powerful deck that is so consistent. Um, we, we discussed this at the start of the tournament. We said there are different ways to build this deck. We're going to be lo really looking forward to which build will prevail. Um, the, f the one deck that made the most of it was the Artifact ABC deck that made it all the way to the semi-finals. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though, because this is what it looked like after day one. Many of the rogue decks, the other category, uh, got taken out. Not that surprising. ABC in still in first place. Almost 50% of the field, so not too bad. Nope. Top 32. Again, ABC, almost 50% of the field. You will notice that Light Swan cannot be defeated. They <laughs> just hang in there in that second place. Yeah. Um, and it just went on like this in the top eight it still looked like this is going to be an abc dominated tournament but after that round the decks that were still standing was only one version of abc that was the one with the artifact decks two lights one decks and one phantom knight burning abyss yep and in the final of course in the final no abc to be found nope so we have one light swan and one burning abyss what year is this <laughs> This is the way to the finals. Um, we had Marcello Barberi going undefeated all the way from round one till the top eight of the tournament. This is where Thomas Rose finally put a halt to his dominant performance yep. with his deck that he described himself as a, the best version of Phantom Knights, Burning Abyss, 40 cards, and then he just added 10 cards on top that <laughs> would help him against ABC and a couple of other cards. Yep. Those 10 <laughs> cards were um, the Chaos Hunter that we saw. Chaos, Chaos Hunter, Vanity Fiend, Ghost Reaper. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Well, well, oh, yeah, and then Mass Change Mass as well. Change 2 as well, yeah. So roughly 10 cards. I think it's ex almost exactly 10 cards. Yeah, yeah, this is his description of his deck. Very interesting approach. Um, then in the lower left corner, we see um, Nicolo, who we just talked about in the semi-finals. He took out some of the greats. Uh, Alexander Hulch with his Mermel deck was... Um, in his way, and he kicked him out. Um, Alpay Engin was in the top 16, but he lost to Alex Porcel, who then fell victim to Michele Azzalini from Italy. All right, that's the left bracket. Now for the right bracket, we have Ben Sherman, former, um, 
Former. Former. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> every round. <laughs> Former UK national champion. Yeah. Um, he was going quite deep all the way until he met Jack Verma from Germany and his light swan deck. Uh, we featured that match. Very exciting. Jack Verma prevailed and advanced to the semifinals where he went up against Tom Fiergutz, also from Germany, and Tom is also playing Lights One. So it was a Lights One mirror in the semifinals and now in the finals, as we said before. Thomas Rose, um, you guys asked us to not call it Burning, <laughs> Burning Abyss uh, Phantom Knights because it's very different with all of these uh, special cards that only he's playing. Yeah. Um, Thomas Rose with his very own deck, let's just call it that, on the one hand, and on the other side we're going to go... Tom Fiergutz with his version of Lights One. That's also playing a couple of zombie de uh, cards. Yeah, not not the Shira New either. Who do you think is the um, favorite going into this match? Uh, I think it has to be the Lights One player because okay. Thomas Rose absolutely turned around and said, "Yep, my deck beats ABCs." That's that's what he that's said it did. Okay, but at the same time, Chaos Hunter, Vanity's Fiend, all of those anti cards are really good against other cards, uh, other yeah. decks as well. So you know. Chaos Hunter stopping the, the snow, Mass Change 2, just Light Swan doesn't like being banished, <laughs> not on its own terms anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Vanity's Fiend, not really good if you uh, get that, just sat in front of you, can't make Minerva. Right. And the only one that's really not that optimal is Ghost Reaper, and I'm, I can only assume that's going to just get taken straight out in, yeah. the, in, the, in that it's first game. It's going to sign into some other cards. Yeah. All right. Luke's prediction is um, that Light Swan is going to prevail. I'm, for that reason, going to have to put my money on Thomas Rose, which makes no sense that I'm yeah. rooting for the UK player. And yeah, you're can, we rooting swap? Can, we, can we swap? No, we cannot. Oh. It's too late for that. All right. And with that, let's take you to the table where the finals of YC's Liverpool 2016 will be underway. There we go, there's the handshake, Thomas Rose on the left, Tom Figgles on the right, and the <laughs> second handshake, <laughs> Daniel and Andrea just trolling the players, basically. <laughs> no, they're not. They're serious about this. Yeah. They so want to They want to do a good job. I, I think that Thomas Rose probably could have a good chance here with all of these cards doing well against um, Light Swarm 2. I really can't call this one. Right, so who's going to go first? Do we know already? No, no, don't know yet. So We do have the opening go. hands, though. <laughs> okay, that's the way to go right. first. Oh, Tom Virgoods here has opened Garnet. That's that's a poor showing by Garnet there. Gem Knight Garnet. I think we've never seen this this weekend. Uh, well, we've seen it a whole lot, just never in the hand. Yeah, <laughs> where, where it doesn't belong. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't belong in the hand. He does have Snow, the so-called best card in the format by Alpa Engin. Yeah. And Instant Fusion, Performance, Trick Clown, and Raiden Hand are the lights one. Yeah. All right, but the story is currently unfolding on the other side of the table. That is Thomas Rose. Yeah. Who went for Dante. And the yeah. he's also got a Pot of Desires, uh, which yeah. we're going to see very soon, I guess. Yeah, Finish Rhino Warriors, sending Graf. Graf's going to summon one of these Burning Abyss monsters from hand. Most likely, yes, the Sir. Um, just straight away get those two limited cards out into the open. So he's plus one so far. He's gonna go plus one again because of the desires. I just it's just so cool that he's playing fifty cards. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> If, yeah. if, if if right at the start of this tournament I said to you a fifty card burning abyss deck's gonna win, you would just laugh in my face. Yeah, I would be like <laughs> No, <laughs> Valence <laughs> Leturtre is always playing forty cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not one hundred percent sure about that. Um also there's a there's a funny story about this, uh about Tom Fiergoods actually. Um he told me this. We featured him before. It's just we featured so many players, so sometimes we kind of forget about it. And we featured him at the European Championship this year in round 11. Okay. And we had a quick chat with him prior to the event, and he said, yeah, if I lose now, my opponent is going to go all the way to uh, the top four and going to go to the World Championship. And I kind of talked down on him. I said, like, that's not the correct way to approach this. You need to win this. You need to think in your head that you're going to win this. But he was correct. 
he lost and his opponent went to the top four of the European who, Championship. Who was, who was it? Um, I'm not 100% sure which of the top four it was, but okay. um, <laughs> we can find that out. We could look it up if we have to. Yeah. He, he's also been on the bubble a couple of times, uh, come really close. And in other tournaments at YCS Prague, for example, he lost in the top A, uh, top something to Sona Günger, who went and ended up on third place. And then yet another YCS, he lost in the top 32 and his opponent ended up winning the event. So wow. he's, he's been in the top 32 a couple of times, came close, but every time he loses against the eventual winner. I think in yeah. Prague he, won he lost uh, against Uru Kovacic, yeah, <laughs> who ended up winning. Yeah, of course. Right. So, plenty of mills going on here. We see the fog blade there from uh, Boots. Boots kindly goes and searches that out for him. Double Dante opener. This is both of his Dantes, so he's <laughs> just going scum for the Beatrice. Yeah, okay. This is kind of as good as you could get from Tom Rose. So you're saying it's a 10 out of 10? Well, it's a 10 out of 10 for his deck, sure, certainly. I think it could have only been better if somehow at the end he was able to summon Vanity's Fiend. All right, so 9.8 out of 10. 9.8 out of 10. All right. Tom Figgots needs something. Yeah. Definitely, he's... Um, it doesn't look great. No. It doesn't look terribly. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it does look terrible. <laughs> no, this, this hand is fine. The charge of the Light Brigade might be fixing something now. No, this this is fine. This, his hand is totally fine. He's lost soul charge to the charge of the Light Brigade. Yeah. And is that a Brilliant Fusion and a Maxi? Uh, Maxi, Brilliant Fusion, soul charge, charge. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay, what is he going to go for here? I think he just he has to play I say the long game, but he he's he's definitely not gonna do much this turn. He's not necessarily in a terrible spot, but he's gonna he really needed um that to uh that mill to mill a level four monster to be honest. Because then he could have instant fusioned. But Raiden, I think, is his best choice. He seems to disagree and when goes for Lumina instead. No, I mean he's already got a Raiden. I mean, you mean he Lumina and then get Raiden back. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's not going to be able to put Raiden in the graveyard. He, he's going to summon Raiden to try and use its effect. Right. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Fairy tales, no. It is yeah. a thing. You can actually normal summon it. Yes. Nobody ever does, but yeah, you can. Yeah. So is that going to get fog bladed? Is he really scared? I'd be pretty scared. I'm about to try and win a YCS here, and I've got this crazy fairy tale snow trying to book down my Beatrice. Ain't nobody got time for that. Fairy tale snow is like a version of Tsukuyomi on steroids. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's it's really like you can special summon it. It has decent uh, stats, not just decent stats for a four-star monster. That's like excellent stats. <laughs> yeah. Great effect. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. This card is a ten out of ten. It's a light monster. It's a spellcaster as well. There is not. There is literally no single bit of this card that is printed that. That <laughs> is not good. <laughs> yeah, it could be a tuner on top of all the other things. Uh, yeah, but no, actually, no, that wouldn't be good because <laughs> then you wouldn't be able to play Raiden with it. Tom Fiergutz is calling it a day. Yeah, it's well, yeah, very understandable. Not the best opening we've ever seen. No, not at all by really. any stretch of the imagination. No. So one all for Thomas Rose, and this is the point where we start getting a little bit shaky because we were on, we're thinking of flashbacks of the European Championship. Uh, sorry, oh, YC's Rimini. Yeah, neither of the players look too happy about that. that yeah, I guess well they're both so focused right now. Thomas Rose, I mean, you got to cut him some slack after that semi-final <laughs> against yeah. Nicolo Mazzolini. At, at first, I thought, why is he so stressed? There's no way that he sees the line of plays that leads to his demise because nobody's playing these cards. His opponent needs to have a Book of Eclipse. His opponent needs to have the Utopia Prime. Nobody's thinking of all of that. Yeah. And he told me, actually, prior to this match, he said, no, I knew that he had all of that. I yeah. knew that he could he could actually turn things around. And I was <laughs> I was scared for my life, so to speak. And, yeah. and and now he feels like he has to validate himself, he has to prove himself, because some people are going to call him, hey, you just got lucky that you ended up in the finals because your opponent um, fluked. And so he wants to show us that he deserves to be in the finals. Yeah. Although, actually, he did that in the other feature matches, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. He already showed why he's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fact that he's here and he's been playing a 50-card deck still just confuses me. <laughs> yeah. 
because you, you you try to erase your memory of that long Dao victory. Yeah. <laughs> One with a 60 card deck. It was it, a it was also 60 cards. Yeah, or 58 or something. Yeah, 60 card Mermail. Yeah, this, this was one of those tournaments where Long Dao did really not do us a favor in Europe because all the American duelists were like, oh, my God, look at Europe, what's winning over there? Yeah, I, I <laughs> Everybody was like, I could win in that final, uh, in that in that format. So we've talked about the side decks a whole lot. Yeah. What do we see here? Or what will we see here? So Flying Seas, definitely going in. Um, Book of Eclipses as well. I think that's it for Tom. And for Thomas, Rose. <laughs> yes, Tom Maxie. Thomas is not very helpful this year. <laughs> Maxi and... Max, he wants Maxi, he wants uh, the Kaijus as well for the, for the Exceed Monsters. Okay, so Thomas Rose going second, I can only assume. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's take a quick look at Thomas Rose's hand. Oh dear. Oh my. He's playing the wrong card game. You don't want to have three, th three copies of uh, Speedroid Teratop. No. Twin Tisses and Mask Change 2. Okay. okay. Tom Figgles, on the other hand, he's yep. got a Foolish Burial, Pot of Desires, which he just activated. Solar Recharge, Uni Zombie. Uh, interesting. Don't you usually play something like Foolish before you activate the Pot of Desires, or? Mm, I think he's, I think he played that correct in that fashion because he Foolish can be many different things in the Light Swan deck, so. It's not like you always go for the same card like in other decks. No, it's not like you go for a single card that you don't want to banish from Desires. You just go for the thing that's suiting the situation. Right. So, he gains. He's got a Snow, snow. in hand. Yeah. And we learned he can normal <laughs> summon that card. Yeah, and He's an eclipse. He does have a book of eclipse. That's the card that was uh, crucial in the other in that semi-final that we have been talking about so much. Yeah. So I think this. I think foolish. What is the trap card? I have absolutely no idea what that is. It's this, but it's in German. What is what is it? Uh, Phantom Knights of Shadow Brigade. What's the exact name? Shades, shadow something. Yep, I, I've never... Phantom Knights of Shadow Veil. Vale. Okay. Is that it? No. Shade Bri Brigandine? <laughs> I, think, I, I think I got it. Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine. Yes, that is the card. Um, special summon this card in defense position as a normal monster. This card is not treated as a trap card, obviously. If you have no trap cards in your graveyard, you can activate this card the turn it was set. This is, this wow. is what he's doing. You can only activate That's one cool. per turn, and it's a level 4, 0 attack, 300 death. So what type is it? It's a warrior type dark. <laughs> okay, okay, this is super weird, but that is the perfect card for light swans. <laughs> We've never seen that before, no. and we will most likely oh. never see this again. Wow. Soul Charge being sent to the graveyard, and then there was finally a good mill. Yeah, I got the clown. So the, this is where I was saying, like, if he'd have milled something else and he'd have drawn into more, Foolish Burial now is probably going to turn into a wolf or something to help that trick clown if he wants to continue with um, with any plays this turn. Probably wolf, yeah. He's only playing one Minerva, so he's going to have to go into something else, most likely an Abyss Dweller. So suddenly his hand is live. I just I just need to get, get over that fact, because just a second ago we were like, this is not a good hand. and I just had no idea what that trap card was. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't in the app, because I think our judge was also, I've never seen this before. What is this? Yeah, it's from Premium Gold. <coughs> and now everything is different, of course. There's a Minerva on exactly. the field, there's an Abyss Dweller on the field. Talk about a good hand. Yeah, he's got a Book of Eclipse. Or a good field. He's just going to play that Abyss Dweller right away. And now... Thomas Rose has been putting been put on the spot with that interesting hand. Yeah. Three copies of Terror Top, Twin Twisters, Mask Change 2, and a Chaos Hunter. That's one of his ten hate cards. 
Actually, and the marks change too, of course. I, and I think he's got a good hand here. If he terror tops, get takes Tomberg, um, turn turn that into some dark level three that can do something. Uh, maybe uh, I don't. I don't think they even play that anymore. Uh, he needs to play a dark level three so he can mass change to it and then attack over the Minerva. Obviously, he's got a um, he's got a book of eclipse face down there. So at some point, he's going to want to play that. But he, I think he needs to make a he needs to make a dark rank three that's threatening enough for him to want to play eclipse. Then he can chain. Ah, no, because if he chains the master, you have to ignore me. <laughs> I'm just having a conversation with myself. Oh, he has twin twisters as well. I didn't see twin twisters. Mm, no, I didn't either. I think his hand just changed. Yeah, I think one of the terror tops was, was actually a twin twisters. Yeah, and okay. another one was a Taki Tomborg, Is that correct? Yes, because he got that from Terra Top. All right. Okay. Now, now we're making. Now it's all making sense. Yes. Starting to make sense. Yes. However, then I, n I now think he misplayed. He should have twin twisted, then played the Terra Top. Right. First, take out the face down. Yeah. Then sure. continue. Yeah. Because now he just can't play. It's interesting. His yeah. opponent made the same mistake the the game before, so yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Oh no, he start yeah, he started his normal summon, so he can normal summon that take Tombog. Uh, sorry, he can normal summon that turret up, then special the take Tombog. But it might get snowed. How many cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven together with snow. Oh. Four, five, five, six. Now he needs one more, right? Wasn't it seven? Y yeah, uh, yeah, but it can be from hand field. It can be anywhere. No, okay, anywhere. okay, so he's just thinking about the seventh card. There we go. Yeah. Snow can be from anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. All right. Is that worth the price? Oh. Yes. <laughs> so he can discard Take Tomborg for Chaos Hunter. And then Chaos Hunter is going to be able to. Oh, wow. Chaos Hunter is going to start doing some serious damage here. Because Chaos Hunter is going to go over the. Um, Okay, so no, he's, he's not going to have enough cards to um, to mass change two, but still, he's going to have a chaos hunter, <laughs> um, which is a good thing. We yes. we learned that in yes in that the last round. That, yes, having three is even better. But yes, that's a good <laughs> thing. That's a good good thing. Okay, I don't understand the confusion here. Yeah, I, I think it's just that heads are about to explode with all of those cards that you've never seen before. And if anybody told you these are the cards you're going to see in the finals of ABC, uh, of ABC Liverpool, of YCS Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> ABC Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, just, let's just call it, it that. It might as well be called ABC Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every, everything is actually like that. We're, we're playing in the ACC Liverpool ah, this weekend. No, he can. He, he can. He's going to attack this. Yep, that's going to take some damage. He's going to set mass change to uh, flip over one of the take box from Book of Eclipse, draw a card, then he can mass change to. Right. Bam. Bam. If Bam. If he figures that out himself. Of course. Of course. course. You're, you're not in the finals of YCS. Or he, or he might not. Okay. Yeah, he didn't. <laughs> well, I can still play in the end phase. Maybe he doesn't want to. Yeah, well, he, he got to draw two cards anyway. Yeah, so he didn't. Thomas Rose did draw into Radiant, the multi-dimensional kaiju. That's and nice. it's back to Tom, who now has a max C. Mm. Oof. Two snows. Not bad. No, but still, he doesn't have anything big enough to get over that Chaos Hunter. The only his, his only current way to get over that, I, I don't know what he's going to say. Were you zombie? No, uh, the only way to get over that currently is to uh, attack into the Chaos Hunter with... Minerva. Minerva, and then hope for Minerva's, <coughs> Minerva's effects to trigger. Right. Or he... Does he get to seven cards if he detaches that from Abyss Dweller? Um, actually, oh, yeah, you just reminded me he had Trick Clown. Yes, I thought he would have played Trick Clown last time, but he didn't. Yes, he has Trick Clown so they can summon Uni Zombie and make some plays that way. <laughs> Not just some plays. Yeah, <laughs> <but> yeah, he can... <laughs> some good plays. Some real good plays, yeah. Yeah. This deck is so flexible. It can attack yep. you from all directions. Yeah, obviously Michael can't banish um, Chaos Hunter. Chaos Hunter, yeah, but he's going to be able to attack right over it. 
which is good enough. Yeah, good enough. And I, I think he's got enough for snow now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's seven exactly. Seven exactly. Oh, well, yeah. He can get rid of the Abyss Dweller if necessary. Not that you would want to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he probably will next turn if his opponent starts playing some cards. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. If it's definitely the better choice to lose your Abyss Dweller than yeah. losing your field. So he should leave. Yeah, he's going to leave him with one take Tombog here. That's a much better play. So the mask change too. How good would it have been to set that? That would have stopped Michael because the the card detached from uh, from Abyss Dweller would have been banished instead, so he wouldn't have been able to uh, summon the Trick Clown. So it would have been better. I mean, he had to. No, but but the Dweller could have always detached in response or detached first. Yes, but he, he would have played mass change too in um, the standby phase or something. No, no, no in end phase. Uh, in his oh, own. Oh, okay. End phase. You mean still in the end phase? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. All right. So but, suddenly, but still, still here. All he needs is a. Uh, he can. Um, oh yeah, it's a mill for 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 Michael. Mm -hmm. He's not played Pop's eyes. Yeah, that's a great draw. Yeah, that is <laughs> definitely no question about it. He All needs right. somewhere to deal with his own Radiant, though, if he's going to put it on on his opponent's size field. I think Dark Law is going to be a pretty good card, but... There's a lot of monsters he's banished there. So, stacking the cards in the banished zone. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like the one exception of this no, no changing the contents of your zone rule, I think. Well, yeah, you shouldn't really... Because it does yeah. matter. It, it can, yeah. Yeah, it absolutely can matter. It's that card that says, that return the top three banished cards to the yeah, graveyard I, or something there was like that. Th there was somebody who said to me, oh, can I rearrange them? And I, I spent the time to look it up. But yeah, there is. there is. I can't remember the exact situation, but there is a situation. Okay, interesting. Tom's got a Maxine hand, and that is pretty much it. But since he's got a field... He doesn't have to okay, worry so as he much. Okay, so he can foolish graph. Or not, because he got banished. Yeah, so accidentally... Uh, yeah, I can only assume that he meant to do it for graph. So just double-checking the card for Tom Fiergutz. It's looking good for Tom. Yeah. But um, we've seen Thomas Rose come back before. Yeah, I mean, he's one up at the moment. Yeah, of course. It's not like he's completely out of it. Actually, yeah, this is a good point. I think if he if he uh, uses the mass change to... Oh, okay, he's got two silent boots. He's going to be able to go boots, boots, make a... There's Maxi. Was that too late to draw? Yeah. No, it's just a normal summon. Normal summon. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Just confused. Still, you may want to chain mass change two now. Before the opponent can draw yeah. off Maxi. Yeah, I chain mass change two, attack over the Minerva so it gets banished, and then uh, from deck set um, Fogblade to stop the opponent. Oh, okay, he's playing, he's just playing through it. To stop the opponent from being able to play Raiden's, uh, Michael's effect. Right. Like you said, he's playing through instead. Yeah, I think... It I think Thomas Rose earlier was the one who said, yeah, yeah, Dark Law is like the best thing in the whole world since sliced bread. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he's probably just going to play through this and then be like, hey, look, here's a Dark Law. Yeah, well, so if your opponent is not playing Foolish Buried into the Shiranui. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> was uh, so, yeah, break, break, sword the Michael, um, bring back uh, Dark Rebellion, exceed Dragon, steal some of Minerva's attack, or steal some of, yeah, steal some of Minerva's attack, attack over Abyss Dweller. Um, mass change two into Dark Law. Uh, Dark Law, attack over Minerva. Bam. This is all assuming that he doesn't snow it right now. Even if he does snow it, he can then play mass change two and do the play that I said before. What? Well, it does look like he's going to snow. Yeah. They can still do the play that I said before. He's going to make it snow. Yeah. Mm, yep. <laughs> but uh, no mass change two? He can still tribute it face down, but yeah. He might not want to. It's no, he first gets the kaiju out, okay. And, and he sets the mask. Uh, either the twin twister or the mask change too. 
He can he can mass change two during his opponent's turn. Of course, yeah. But Radiant is bigger than it. He did set a mass change too, not all that surprising. Yeah. If he attacks into Breaksaw, the Breaksaw, even if it gets destroyed by battle, I think, it still gets its effect. I may be completely mistaken there. Yeah, if you want to read it. No. Oh. I can't. Yeah, it's just if it's destroyed, yeah. I'm sitting like a good two meters apart from this. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it now that I wear my glasses. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, and I've needed glasses. I've never been able to read those cards. Right. Tom Fiego <laughs> did draw into another Max C. Got yeah. two charge of the Light Brigade. See, yeah, if I if he'd have been able to succeed with the play that he wanted to do last turn, if that Snow Hand had interrupted him, that would have been bonkers. You're talking about uh, Thomas Rose? Yeah, if Thomas Rose would have been able to play, make the play that he wanted to make, then that would have been bonkers, because charge of the Light Brigade, you just can't play it, because you can't pay the cost. Hmm, yeah. But now it's a different story. So when when is the best point in time to activate the mask change? I think at this point it's simply not because Radian is on twenty eight hundred attack points. If Radian is going to attack over the um, attack over the break sword, mm -hmm. then that's probably the most probably time to play it dark uh, to, to play dark law. But still, it's not non ideal because then you've still got Radian on the field. I think the the trouble will be Radiant. If if he has it basically if Radiant just disappeared now, <laughs> like just somehow disappeared. Yeah. And then um he had Dark Law, he would be he would be winning. Even with his opponent having three monsters and all of this other stuff, he would be winning. Yeah, very interesting situation. The two charges. Brilliant fusion. It's also gonna put in some work somewhere down the line, that brilliant fusion. Yeah. And yet another Max C. So Tom Fiegoods definitely gives his opponent something to think about. And he's currently also thinking quite a bit about his next play. Um. Oh, okay. Um, apparently one of the players has found a random extra Castell in their, in their deck. Okay. So uh, they're looking, th I think... Yeah, basically, one of them's taken it from their last opponent by accident. <laughs> okay. They're and their extra deck or what? Yes. Yeah, from uh, it's a Castell. Yeah. So uh, out there, they're probably having the same issue of, where's my Castell? <laughs> right. Because all of the players that have been playing in the last two matches are still here. Are still right, playing. right. In the, you mean in the, in the game for the third place? Yeah. Yeah, because th those two guys um, who ended up in the semifinals but got kicked out, they also have to play one more round because we need to know who's going to walk away with yet another... Price card. Yeah. Yeah. And just being corrected, the mass change two on an XYC doesn't work on an Exceed Monster. Does it not? I just assumed it does because <laughs> you've been sounding so. Yeah, I thought it did. I uh, do you know what you, well, the first time I said it. I think it needs to be a level three monster. Ah, yes, because it, no, no, it's just that it doesn't have a level. And that has a level, yeah. It's Actually, it's pretty precise in that way. Yep. Okay. Still. So Mark Strange is not doing anything. Yeah. Still, I think any of the players that I spoke about, he could have done by just you, yeah, using it on the yeah. material. Yes, that is true. But he didn't want to go for it. For some reason, he might have thought uh, the break sword is uh, so much better. So how does uh, Tom get over this monster? It, it shouldn't be impossible, or it shouldn't take uh, two minutes of <laughs> thinking. No, no, I think the, the judges are trying to give back the... Uh, oh, it's Castel. still all about that uh, extra Castell. Yeah. I think they're trying to return the Castell to its rightful owner. All right, so... so just uh, we are, according to my clock, we are 26 minutes into the round. Um, even though it's the finals, this is still timed. Um, we might be able to get some more information if we switch cameras to the side and yep. take a look at what happens at the table, really, rather than having this uh, top-down view. Yep. Oh, I see the head judge walking out of the feature match area. So they might be done with this? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have a healthy amount of extra time, I guess. Yeah.
All right, so four monsters for Tom Fearguts. Uh, for, yeah, for Tom Fearguts. One face down for Thomas Rose. And that is the Phantom Knights of Breaksword. His only defense, really. Yeah. And now we see some action again. Mm hmm. Okay, so Charles Light Brigade, there's the Garnet. It's better to be in the graveyard than it is to be stuck in your hand. Yeah, at this point with Fairy Tail Snow, everything in the graveyard is a good card. Yeah. Even though if it doesn't trigger itself, um, you just want to have more cards to banish for that all important Fairy Tail card. Yeah. Some some players suggested we should just call it the Fairy Tail deck, which is weird because that's actually an archetype Fairy Tail. Yeah. Not not just Snow. Like there are other Fairy Tail. Did he play? De has he played Desires? Has Tom Viergutz played Desires this game? I think he has, because his deck's only like six cards. Um, I think below the face-up banished cards is like a pile of, of banished cards. Yeah, I just see the way he's looking through his deck. I was like, eh? Why has he got so little cards? But yeah, he must have... Uh, I think he did, yeah. Played Desires and then banished it. Yeah, of course he did. This game is ju it's just weird. Yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, five cards left in his deck. Okay, so Thomas Rose may think about that. He may yeah, be going Thomas for deck out. Thomas Rose might be like, yeah, I can go for deck out. Um, and also Tom Figo's got a card in his hand, Maxi. He probably doesn't want to activate. No. Under any circumstance, no. So he's got four cards left. Wow, like when Needleworm would win you the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just swap that face down monster for a Needleworm. That, that would be it. Yeah, Needleworm with Exceed material. <laughs> Yeah, the Exceed Materials are Phantom Knights. <laughs> Some players are now suggesting that sneaking a second Castell into your opponent's extra deck is a viable winning strategy. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can try that, but you better not get caught. All right, so where are we going to go from here? I think that Tom Fugutz has to figure out a way to uh, get this off the field without destroying it which isn't too difficult. I mean, well, it's face down, so you can't castell it. Did I, again, I just keep making cards up. Um, the app on the right says there's a Michael on the field. That is not the case. That is uh, the Kaiju. <coughs> there we have seen the, the peak action. And yeah, I it's got to be face... Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be face up. So, Dweller attacks. Yeah, splits into... Two more monsters. Yeah. The materials. All right. No more defense for Thomas Rose. Nope. And now Multi Tom Figures is finally dealing some damage. We're getting somewhere. Yep. Slowly but steadily. Yeah. So a little bit more than 3,000 life points remaining for Thomas Rose. He's got, he's almost out of cards. He's got a twin twisters in hand and he's got a mask change two face down. Uh, that is not much. His opponent, Tom Fiegels, only has four cards left in his deck. Is it just three now? Did he draw another card? Um, Don't think so. No. So he went for Psy, Frame Lord, Omega. And with that, he's probably going to pass play very soon. Yeah, so he banishes the Twin Twisters from Thomas Rose's hand here. Hey, to be fair, he's going to be able to banish those boots and start getting fog blades. So that, that's going to stop some attacks. I, d I don't know if it's going to be enough, but... You think he's just trying to get to that magical moment when your opponent goes stick out? Yeah. I and don't think it's going to be possible, but it would certainly be a way to <laughs> end <laughs> the YCS. Yes, that would be something. What is the best draw that Thomas Rose can have here? Um, the Fiendish Rhino Warrior is... Hmm. Meh. No, Fiendish Rhino Warrior is okay, but I don't think Thomas Rose has what he needs to, to hang use, in to there. use Fiendish Rhino Warrior to his greatest potential. Rhino Warrior would be a great one if he had a Graffin deck. And if he had a Graffin deck and a Surin deck as well, that would, that would be a perfect set of uh, cards to have. Yeah, he's just checking his graveyard. Now... We're going to see this surge yeah. going on. Boots for the fog blade. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. So Tom's probably got this. And then it would be 1-1 one, one between Tom Rose and Tom Feargoods. And then we're going to be continuing with another um, little interference of... We're looking at what? What's up? <laughs> Luke is in shock. Um, he's just... If he equips Dark Law with the Phantom Knight sword, then it's bigger than all of the other monsters. But we said... He that has to draw a card. Yeah, he has to draw a card, and we also said that Master Change 2 needs to... No, he has a card. He has to win Twisters. Yeah, but uh, didn't didn't we say that he has to... Master Change 2, didn't it say a face-up monster? Then target one face-up monster you control that has a level. Y yeah, sure. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, there's, he must have a Burning Abyss monster in his deck. Right, so he first wants to work through his deck, prevent, uh, stop yet another attack or, go or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. I, I think that's enough. Dark Law is on 24. That would put him to 29. So he triggers the effect. Hmm. Phantom Knight, no, Phantom Knight Sword will remember by 800. Good thing that this Abyss Dweller is out of effects. Yeah. yeah, out of yeah, he's got Graf. Graf's gonna summon uh, a Burning Abyss monster. He can mass change two into it. I don't know. <laughs> let's just see what happens. Know. Yeah, let's see what happens. All right. So far, so good. So far, yeah. the predictions were correct. There's a scam on the field now. Yep. Yeah. Tom Figuts must be so puzzled by all of this. It's like, why? Yeah. Why are we still playing? What's going on? Here's an attack. This is it. And no, it is not. There's a mass change too. And now the yep. big question is, wh what are you going to do when mass change 2 hits you? Yeah, here we go. And then now he's thinking, um, Dark Law. Okay. I remember reading a card that you just added to your deck. So replay occurs. Do you wish to continue your attack? <laughs> <laughs> do you wish to lose your monster? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I attack into it anyway. There's n there's no reason not to, and then at least he at least he's has to play it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> See, this I told you, <laughs> this was gonna happen. <laughs> Here we go. But I think he also needs to make space for snow, doesn't he? Um. But. Yeah. So how good is Dark Law in this situation? I d I don't know how many cards he has. Yeah. Well, yeah, he has enough for snow on the field and in his hand. But does he? He's definitely. Yeah. Okay. He's got. No. No. Like grip. he's. Yeah, there's no question about it. He's yeah, okay. I didn't realize he had so many in his grave. Ah, oh, well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> I thought he like totally had it then. Yes, that was seven cards. I'm pretty certain about it. Yeah, again, this is all in his battle face. <laughs> wow, what a shame. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. It was a cool play. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, yes, it was. But I'm always the advocate of the cool play. <coughs> 1800, which is so fitting that uh, Fairy Tail Snow is 1850. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at Dark Lord. This card, this card, way too good. Yeah. Way too good. And then attack for game. Okay. Yes. Is there Necro Garden or no, something? No, he has a he has a <laughs> trap. <laughs> at this point, I'm like. Anything can happen. Yeah, he has a trap. He's still saying, yes, I have everything. Thomas Rose really doesn't want to give up, ever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, like why would you? Why, why, why would you? you no, thought. I'm not saying he should. <laughs> I'm, I just want to point it out again. <laughs> yeah, banish the Phantom Knight's sword. Bri uh, sword. He is a Summon Break Sword back. Yeah, okay, we're in business. If he destroys this, he gets to go... Oh, no, it's only if it's XC Summon. Okay, sure. Still, he's got this. <laughs> Does he survive this turn? No. Yep. 800 and then 17. He's only going to take 2-5. He's on 600 life points. He's, he's only, all good. He's only going to take 2-5. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He just needs to draw a needleworm now. He is in business. Yeah. Thomas Rose with one card. <laughs> uh. Okay. Searching for Skarm. See, he probably has Skarm. He, like, he, didn't he just... Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what else is there? This burning of a stick, it's, it's giving me headaches. <laughs> it's just running circles around the opponent even while it's losing. <laughs> Thomas Rose is down on 600 life points. Every other, every other deck, seriously. With that feeling, with, with all of that, Tom Figuts is show, 
throwing everything but the kitchen sink and the snow inside the kitchen sink <laughs> at Thomas Rose's head. And he's still, still somehow hanging in win. there. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Two cards left in Tom Figut's quotation marks deck. <laughs> it's his turn. He's got a seal in hand. Hey, He's like, I'm, I'm not saying it's slow play, but this is one of those situations where Thomas Rose is thinking, yeah, sure, I've got Barbar in my deck. I'm fine if I want to go to time. Like, he's, but he's still playing at a pace. Like, yeah, but he cannot, he cannot make up all that damage. No, Anyways. I'm saying he, if he goes to time, then he's pl he's playing as much as possible to get into time. Right. Oh, that's what you mean. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, it is definitely Thomas. Uh, Thomas Rose is the one player that has a higher interest in in having less time on the clock. Yeah. 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 Of course, because he's probably going to win in the timeout. Yeah, and he's thanks to Barber. Yeah, and he's going to be able to have another. So he gets his open game state here. He's going to summon, sir. <laughs> it's so confusing as an opponent, like thinking about what's what's he gonna do next. He's already done everything. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna to get rid of the last card from his hand. So there's only a seal left. Uh, yeah, but he's got um, boots in graveyard as well, so he can go and search for a um, for a um, break a uh, <laughs> fog blade. It's late in the day. I can't remember my trap cards again. Yeah, there's the fog plate. Just wow, Thomas Rose. What <laughs> he's just <laughs> fighting to the nail. Yeah. Seriously, it's like, yeah, a horse just tri <laughs> tripped over in the Grand National, and it's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, Omega's coming back. So is the Phantom Knights monster. Yeah. Is that it, or is it still gonna be? No, because Seer is going to be able to get back Graf. Graf's going to go get another card from deck. I mean, I, I think that's it. It should be. Oh, yeah, of course. So he can he can put a Fog Blade on the Sir, and he can't attack it. You're not allowed to attack it. You're just not allowed to declare an attack on the monster that has Fog Blade on it. <laughs> and now he can just pass, and he's going to deck him out. <laughs> Oh my We've God. never seen this move before, have we? Wait, is that a black rose dragon? Does he have? Does he have one in his side deck? Yeah, uh, in his extra deck? What is that? I don't think I don't see one. It must be Scarlight. In any case, Tom Fiergoods has finally won the second game. Okay. <laughs> it was confusing. We're not 100% sure what uh, what the last card was because it was way too shiny. You want to consult with our judges. What a thriller between those two. Thomas Rose not giving away anything against Tom Feargoods. And finally, it's 1-1. One, one. And it looked like... Like you uh, you were saying earlier about, <laughs> about Thomas Rose and about how, like, how, you know, he kind of has to prove himself here. That proves, this proves it for me. Just, he was able to keep on playing and he had a win condition right up until the end. Yeah. It wasn't like he was fighting just to lose later. He had a win condition right up until the end. <laughs> Book of Eclipse for takeout. Yeah, that would have been something. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> just imagine that. All right, going into the last game. Uh, Thomas Rose is going to be allowed to go first. He's got the Phantom Knights Burning Abyss deck with 10 extra deck cards that are just there to make your opponent's life hell. Yeah. We have seen part of that just now, again, uh, for the third time this weekend, I think. Um, Tom Figuitz, on the other hand, is playing Light Swan. He's been very close a couple of times before in the top 32. And then very, very often he ended up with the problem that he was paired against the eventual winner of the tournament. Today he yeah. wants to be the winner of the tournament. So the question is, what can he do now? What can he side in and uh, finally gain the upper hand in that yeah. final match? Well, so just just to note before we start talking about that, there is two minutes left on time, which means they're going to be going into sudden death. Yeah. So there's going to be Baba making an uh, making an impression, hopefully, for Thomas yeah. Rose. Yeah. Yes, okay, yes. Um, so just to say, yeah, same as the first game, he's going to be wanting to put Flying Season, maybe Book of Eclipse, now that he knows that he's playing Dark Law. Um, that's about it, really. <laughs> and then for Thomas Rose, same as I said before, the Kaijus. 
in the maxis. It was Scarlight, by the way. Yeah, I saw Scarlight. Okay. Just thank yeah. you. So thank you, guys. Scar Scarlight would be able to destroy all of his own monsters and then inflict 500 for each. All right, okay, so, we, so we got the, the final. The final. Thomas Rose starts with Far Far, Fiendish Rhino Warrior, Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak, Port of Desires, and another Port of Desires, which he activates. Now we're time. in time. Yeah. So, right on the first turn. So these are the last four turns in YCS Liverpool. Right. Tom Fiegels has... they don't inflict damage. <laughs> yeah, for Tom Fiegels, the advantage is he's got two turns to attack, whereas yep. Thomas Rosen only has got one. On the other hand, the Phantom Knight's Burning Abyssdeck is known for being able to just defend itself really, really uh, greatly. And then, of course, he's also got Barba to deal some direct damage. Yep. However, he does have Flying Sea. So he's going to T-top, take Tom Boggs, probably going to come down, and then he's going to see Flying C here. Such a good card. Yeah, really good card. The Charge of the Light Brigade is probably the most important card in Tom Fugel's hand, because yeah. other than that, he's only got normal summons. Yeah. Which are not, <laughs> not exactly what you want in this format. Here you go, you can have this as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fly Flying C, such a good card. Yeah. So Thomas Rose here not necessarily too happy with that. So, Thomas Rose now. That puts a ball to, to figure out what's going on here. Does he have any tribute summonable monsters by any chance? Mm, not in hand. Whoa, he has anti spell fragrance. Actually no he has pop desires. Yeah he should play pop desires. He, he did. He did play a second okay, one. Okay, it's just not. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry, yes. I just didn't see the first one. He should just play the second one. Yeah, just play the second one. <laughs> he needs to play the second one. Okay. So, Farfar? Far? Farfar's effect on the Flying Sea? Wow. That's that's a good way to deal with it. I didn't even that's see you had a Farfar. Far. Doesn't say it on our app here. But not anymore. Here. It, it just disappeared so quickly. Yeah. So now we got Dante, and yep. now he's in business. Yeah, well, yep, he didn't necessarily mill the best here, but can't have it all. Uh, you can go at least get a Fog Blade, which can potentially negate the Flying Sea if absolutely necessary. So yeah, Boots, Boots gets Fog Blades. If absolutely necessary, he can he can play it that way. See, this is the thing with Thomas Rose. He's drawn that second pot of his eyes. He can still play it. He's playing 50 cards. Yeah, no, that's not it. I mean, it's it's still not great to have two Pot of Desires, is what I heard. Although we've seen worse this weekend. We've seen a Pot of Desires to draw two Pot of Desires. Yes, that was pretty bad. That was quite something. Flying Sea is coming back. That was the Scam opening in the end phase. for Thomas Rose. Yeah. He's probably going to flip the anti-spell fragrance. Tom Rose works out. Yeah, this this works out really well for Thomas Rose. Yeah, because he, he set, has he set all his spell cards? Yeah, so he's definitely going to flip anti-spell straight yeah, yeah. away. So Tom this is going to shut down. Tom Fiergoods needs a top deck like an MST or Twin Twister. We've seen that one before. Yeah, I don't know if he'll, he might have taken them out, though. Yeah, he didn't really see any reason to keep them in no. before. No, exactly. Unless, uh, apart from those Phantom Knights traps. All right, so he plays, uh, he passes play and immediately flips. Anti-spell. And he drew there's wolf. a wolf. Yeah, oof. Okay, so he basically just has to normal summon Snow or Mizuki now. Okay, just an update from our head judge here. We had Jack Verma is confirmed as third place. So Nicolo Maslini loses to Jack Verma. So he'll be taking home the Utopia Kaiser. So this is really looking good for Thomas Rose here. Yeah. I mean, his opponent is, is forced to this very conservative opening with a card set to each zone. 
Yeah. And um, the only card that really would have turned this hand into anything was a charge of Light Brigade. Yeah. Um, I mean, he can he can happily um, negate his own effect with a with the Fog Blade. I think negate negate the Flying Sea, and then just go nuts. So back to Thomas Rose. So his cloak. He's going to mill Dante first. Yeah, true. I mean, he has to see all of his options, see exactly where he's going to go with this. Not great mills. Those were all really good cards that he could have kept a hold of. Now he's thinking about those face down cards. He's got yeah. another Port of Desires. Yep. So Fog Blade, On the Flying, flying sea. sea. Yeah. He's going to exceed someone <laughs> using a flying sea. <laughs> using a flying sea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that every day. Nope. So just going to flip that fog blade up to upside down to dictate that it's not in play anymore. He's going to detach his own. I'm keeping this flying sea. You gave it to me as a gift. I'm going to keep it. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is turn two. So the last possible turn will be the turn after this one. That poor flying sea. That's like... <laughs> insults. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute insults. I I think, mistreatment. I think Thomas Rose may have this one. He's going to be able to do at least like 6,000 damage. Yeah, even so, like Break in any the, case, he's going to uh, pull ahead. Yeah, by, by, a, by a lot. Long distance. Yeah. yeah, and all Tom Fiergutz has is one charge of the Light Brigade, and then he's still not gotten rid of that anti spell fragrance. So no matter what he draws. Um, no. Yeah, it doesn't look good for him. Let's let's just put it that way. He does have fairy tale snow, but um, no seven cards. Yeah, so destroys the the already dead um, thing. Actually, yeah, break sword is on um, three thousand as well. Uh, sorry, three thousand five hundred. Is it? I, I I'm just like forgetting the most basic of things now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's check again. We got. Yeah, 3,000. Still the Port of Desires for Thomas Rose. Is he going to activate it? So 18, 25, 35, 3,000. So 3, 5, 5, 6, 5, 73. That's going to leave Tom Viergutz on 700, 700 life, life points. points. Oh, and yeah. then he summoned, yeah, he can uh, he can use the Fog Blade to summon back the uh, gloves. <laughs> wow. Thomas really, Rose really is your excellent YCS. play for Thomas Rose. Yes, yes. Thomas Rose is your YCS Liverpool champion. And <laughs> yeah, he has the last laugh. Yeah. After that gigantic final, uh, that, that really went back and forth quite a bit. And um, yeah, you can't help but feel bad for Tom Fiergutz. It's, it, it really looked like um, he might have had it with his Lice yeah. deck. But in the end, uh, again, we did see an anti-spell fragrance making all the difference. Yeah. Wow. Anti-spell fragrance really put the work in there. Yeah. Let's talk about that some more in our post-game analysis.